And I, I feel like I'm oversimplifying, right? I, mm. uh, I, 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 do I ever get there? Do I ever get to this minimalist life? No. No, I mean, I don't think so. I I'm mean, almost there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am so close. <laughs> well, I, what I've realized is that, yes, you'll get somewhere that you want it to be. But then there's always going to be somewhere else you want to be. And thank goodness for that, right? Yeah. Like, I feel really happy that we're living here in Los Angeles now. We've got a beautiful studio set up. I'm really happy with the apartment that I live in. Uh, I know you're happy with your new apartment that you're in. Yeah. And this works really well for right now. But it does mean it doesn't mean that we won't want to change some point in the future yeah and circumstances I, are guaranteed to change yes like there's that, that absolutely so minimalism you know when i when i first saw it it was never a destination for me mm. it was it was like this common sense philosophy that i was like oh like i just need to apply these principles to my life and maybe i can regain some of that control right um but yeah anything could be taken too far right well, yes, yeah. I mean, I think that if uh, if if it's reactionary, the thing we were talking about earlier, we were doing the YouTube pre-roll thing, acting versus reacting, mm -hmm. and maybe that's the question that, that Sarah's trying to figure out here: is is she reacting to the job, and does that make her want to move away, mm -hmm. or is she wanting to take action because that's the appropriate next step in in her life? Yeah, um, you know, when it comes to simplifying and uh, her talking about how she's kind of become addicted to it, or maybe she's like overdoing it, you know, just to reiterate, like you can take anything and, and overdo it. She even talks about, you know, she's, she, uh, the word, uh, obsession she used in her question mm -hmm. and obsession can be a really beautiful thing. Yes. It really can be uh, until it becomes compulsive. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in fact, you know, I, I think that you know, we often get confused and we think removing the clutter is, is, is the end result. But you and I sometimes talk about how it's really just the first step. You're, right. you're getting rid of the excess so you can make room for your health or your finances or your creativity or your career or your ability to contribute. Mm -hmm. You're making room for those things. That's the point. That's the purpose of simplifying. Mm -hmm. There are other benefits. Like it's nice you to feel calm in your own home home it's nice to get the excess stuff out of the way you feel better coming home to an intentionally curated home absolutely but that is not the point just the the simplifying so ask yeah. yourself why not just the how-to side of things well and the cool thing for sarah is so she has minimized her life up to this point mm -hmm. to the point where you know she's talking about maybe she's taking it too far mm -hmm. but the cool thing is is that if she does need to pick up and move she could do that very easily. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate about like Mariah and I's possessions and, and what we have in our lives as physical things. It's, it's the right amount. Moving it, always sucks, yeah, but it's easier but it's when easy, you're a minimalist. Man. I could turn my life around on a dime. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's really does. It's really freeing. And, and part, I mean, of the, part of the reason you could turn your life around on a dime is because you're untethered from those expectations mm -hmm. as well, where it's like, well, now I'm going to live here for the rest of my life and I'm going to have this particular career for the rest of my life and I'm going to have a family that looks like this for the rest <laughs> of my life. No, you're not tethered to that. You're tethered, you're, you're untethered, which is freeing so that you can explore as your preferences, desires, personality changes over the years, which it should. Yeah, so I think Sarah should get clear on those preferences and if she wants to leave New York, that's okay. But instead of running from New York, she really has to be clear on what she's running towards. Mm. So Sarah, uh, maybe it's time to graduate from New York City and that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah and by the way, you can go back if, if, you, if you ever make the wrong decision. I mean, that, that's the thing. You, and, and hopefully at the end of this, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite cities and why they're some of my favorites. And, and uh, I what I'm realizing with Sarah here is you're going to make some sort of decision. You're not, and it may not be the perfect decision, but whatever the decision is, you're going to learn from it. The important thing is to take some sort of action to move beyond the situation that's comfortable right now. And that's what kept me where I was for a long time. I was 60% comfortable. Everything was six out of 10. And it's like, well, I don't want to feel any real pain. I don't want this to be a two or a negative two or a negative five experience. So I'm going to stay here in my comfort zone. Mm. But after a time, that comfort zone becomes unsettling. It becomes uncomfortable because we're no longer growing. We're not being the best version of ourselves. And then what we desire is no longer being met.